man, it's cold outside. We're in the dead of winter, which makes it very difficult for me to be working on my projects in the garage or outside. Gee, Lisa, it looks like tomorrow I'll be shoveling 10 feet of global warming. So I figured it would be a great time to give you a behind the scenes look right here in my basement. I'll show you around this room where I filmed this part of the video. I'll show you my virtual hardware store. I really need to buy screws, nuts, bolts, handles, knobs, and all kinds of other doodads. You're gonna see some past, present, and future projects. I'll even show you some pretty weird stuff, as well as how I organize all of my junk. Excuse me, valuable resources. Welcome to Alley Picked. So my basement is pretty much laid out like the letter H. I'm going to take you down both ways and then down the middle where there's a furnace room and I have some more storage in there. So I think the best way to do this is to start with the second camera and I'm going to let you see what I'm seeing right now. Right across from me you can see my GoPro camera with a Rode microphone attached. I think I'll start by giving you the quick rapid nickel tour. Then I'll do it again in more detail for the dollar tour. Rule number one for any good shop or work area, stay organized. When I'm working on a project, I might need 10 different parts and 10 different tools. Having them organized so you can retrieve them all quickly saves you time and money. Also, you know exactly what you have and you don't have to buy it again because you know exactly where it is. This includes plenty of storage containers, plenty of shelving even having custom shelving if you need it to fit your own space. I even made shelving between my wall studs in this unfinished room. Unfortunately, storing and organizing your stuff is a never-ending battle since you're always using, replacing, and getting new stuff. Well, that's the quick tour. Let's head back to the start and do it all again in more detail. Behind the camera, I keep my charging station equipped with three power strips and on-off switch Plenty of shelves for batteries. This is my Craftsman drill press from the 1990s. It still works great. This scroll saw, I bought it for 10 bucks. It needs a good cleaning, but it works fine. This storage unit I made, it's fantastic. On one side, I store all my pliers, needle nose, channel locks, wire cutters. The other side has plenty of storage space for construction screws and nails. I try to use as much wall space as possible. Here I store clamps, adhesives, a cabinet here for electrical connectors and splices, large drawers for bolts, screws, anchors, all kinds of useful items. Here's a drill bit sharpener, laser level. These are my paddle bits, which I removed the rust off of these in my most watched video. Over 5 million views. Uh? I know, I can't explain it either. Multifunction tools, grinders, hand planer, jigsaw. This is cool. It's a tap and die set that belonged to my great grandfather. He once owned a hardware store in Chicago in the 1920s. In fact, here's a phone book entry from 1928 showing my great grandfather's home address and his business address. Did you notice that next to a person's name they list their occupation? This here is the best storage idea. It's for hundreds of small parts, all labeled and organized. If I need a pan head screw, there they are, all different kinds. Some chain for a stained glass project? Here, I've got plenty. A glue gun, shrink tubing, more storage. Here's a toolbox in which I keep small lamp parts and hardware. Tile supplies. Here's an oil can that I picked up for three bucks. I'll make something out of it eventually. Did you ever see the oil can that I found in the alley? I made it into a stool. There's a generator I bought for Y2K when we all thought the world was going to end. Another toolbox where I store miscellaneous tools, taps, chucks and chuck keys, cordless drill bits. Interesting story about where I got this toolbox from. About 20 years ago, I was building a front porch on the house where I used to live. I didn't know it at the time, but there was a man who lived across the street up on the second floor. He was watching me build. His name was Casey. Casey was stuck in a wheelchair. He lost a leg due to diabetes and he couldn't get out on his own anymore. And when he finally passed away, his wife told me that Casey wanted me to have all of his tools, including 
this toolbox. She said he really missed working around the house and he couldn't do it anymore due to his disability, but he really enjoyed watching me work on my steps and around my house and he knew that I would enjoy his tools. So now, whenever I use one of Casey's tools, I remember him. Here I have a bunch of knobs that I take off of old furniture, a bunch of electrical supplies. I keep all my sandpaper in file folders organized by grit. Here's some wood parts, air tools, this is a table saw blade sharpener, organizer for my pencils, pens, markers, brushes. Oh, this is cool. This is my Alley Picked Branding Iron. Tape dispenser, my new stone carving chisels. These were not cheap. Large metal drawers, I've got one for Phillips, flat, files, electrical, knives and blades, chalk lines and center punches, nut drivers, torques, little hammers, and my buddy, little Marky. Moving along, here's another shelf unit where I keep chemicals, paint thinner, rags, socket set, a CD radio, and there's my new calculator, a Craftsman router. Here's an old card index file. I keep looking for something to use this for. My copper plumbing supplies. Copper fittings are crazy expensive now, so it pays to save them. To the right, I've got a five foot two person saw, but I'm sure you have one of these in your basement as well. Here's some stained glass channel. Across from that is a workbench with more storage drawers for parts, lots of tools in these drawers and underneath. I save just about everything that I have room for. To the right of the workbench, I have this plastic bin where I keep some interesting old tools or items that are in need of a little restoration. Under that bench in the middle of the room is where I store all of my stained glass supplies. Lead cane, dowel rods, a couple of pumps for when my basement floods. On the other side, I keep my mat cutter, small pieces of stained glass, sheets of stained glass organized by color, and my glass grinder. And that about finishes up this room. It's pretty amazing how much stuff I managed to store in a room that's only 9 foot by 14 foot. Let's head on to the next room. Here's an old Ikea cabinet that is now storage for tie down straps, gloves, templates, plastic bags, Dremel tools, more stained glass pieces. On top I have drill sets, a couple nail guns, more tools. Here's some picture hanger wire. These are tools I use for stained glass projects. Oh, here's a portable sandblaster that I just picked up from Harbor Freight. Here's an old bathroom paper towel dispenser. Here's a set of five rigid tools that I bought at a yard sale for 25 bucks. Yes, you heard me correctly. Malls, screwdriver set, oh, and this sign. Let me tell you about this sign. Now I love this sign, horse powered buzz saw. It actually came from a tourist attraction that actually had a horse powered buzz saw. It was called Rock Home Gardens in a little town called Arcola, Illinois. In the gardens, they had this old town set up and they actually had a horse that would go around in a circle, connect it to some gears and levers, and it would turn a buzz saw. Here's an actual photograph of my daughter when she was little riding the horse. So after the buzz saw cut a section of a log like this, this is an actual piece of a log that was cut by the horse. You would take this over to the blacksmith shop that they had there and he would burn your child's name into it. It was a really great place to visit. It's gone now. They turned it into a wildlife zoo. Here I keep painting supplies and lots of paintbrushes, which I usually pick up at estate sales for almost nothing. These plastic shoe boxes make for some great storage organizers. I've got a bunch of old projects that I made here. Uh, maybe you remember this one. It's the light buddy. He's missing his head. Um, this was the step stool that I made. Some other projects here. Uh, more storage. I made this shelf here. Let's take a left and look into this storage closet. More projects in here. Oh, this one was pretty cool. You remember this? Banjo clock. I like that. A shelf. City skyline. More projects. 
This is an old brass candle holder I picked up from what was a Lutheran church. We could probably spend another 15 minutes going through this closet, but we better move on. I made these paint can shelves out of scrap wood. Here's another storage shelf unit that I use to store all kinds of things. On top, I've got some artwork, drawings, posters. Oh, check this out. Let me show you this one. This is pretty cool. It's a movie poster from the movie Saving Private Ryan from 1998. It won a bunch of Academy Awards. Funny thing is, I don't even remember where I got this poster from. Here's some paints I store in an old Pepsi crate. I keep all of my wood carving supplies in this box. Furniture markers, picture frames, so I can do all my own framing. That's about it for this room. Let's head on over to the furnace room. Here, I keep all my caulks, paints, stains. A lot of the supplies I have in here come from estate sales where I pay just a fraction of the original cost. And the world's largest collection of polyurethane. These are a bunch of small acrylic paint bottles, audio, video, and computer cables I might need, some spare keys and keychains. These are oils and lubricants. I think that's a two-ton press. I even have more stuff tucked away on this narrow shelf between my chimney and this wall. More nails, wood stains, some 8-track cassette tapes, and here's my collection of Twilight Zone episodes on VHS tape. And that's my furnace. I had to get a new one this year. Unfortunately, that was not alley picked. Little chop saw, my air compressor. Oh, this thing, that's pretty cool. Oh, Tony Hawk. I'm told that this thing actually came off of a ship in the 1800s. Check it out. This thing just looks old. It has wood hinges and old nails. If I could pick one thing down here that could tell me a story, it would be this chest. Hoses, pipes, steel wool, fishing supplies, as well as a bunch of other stuff. That's pretty cool. A real stoplight that's been rewired. This tractor looks like a toy, but it's actually a sprinkler that needs some repair. I'm not sure if I want to fix it or just turn it into a lamp. More storage here, including a very creepy baby doll from the 1960s that belongs to my wife. As we head out, I have storage here for lamps and some larger lamp repair supplies. I'm now heading towards the laundry room. Not a lot of excitement here, but I do keep some more items stored here. Besides laundry detergent, I have more spray cans and cleaning supplies. This box contains all of my soldering irons and sponges. Here's my slop sink, which has obviously cleaned its fair share of paintbrushes. On this side, I keep electrical wire, more picture frames and mats. Here's some wood marble toys that I made. This shelf has a few interesting items. I love to look through old life magazines. Here's a stack going back to before World War II. And you gotta love these old ads, which you couldn't get away with today. Modern, new popular priced Hoover has the beauty, the features, and the cleaning ease that meets the 1946 cleaning needs of busy women. <laughs> Quality minded women. Man, try to get away with that today. I'm not exactly sure why I'm keeping these gears. Hopefully, I'll live long enough to figure something out. Here's a box of bumper pool hardware. Who knows, maybe it'll become a clock. And now we end up in the room where I started. And since you've been such good little boys and girls and watched every second of the video up to this point, I'm gonna show you one bonus room. Let's check it out. This is a pegboard wall of tools where I keep wrenches, hammers, axes, saws. Ah, where do I begin? Here's my chainsaw on top of another tool chest.
Now here on the back wall, I built some custom shelving for plastic shoe boxes. I used some reclaimed wood from my Uncle Tony's fence. Using this method, I can store an amazing amount of supplies, all at my fingertips. Thanks for watching Alley Picked. I know this video was a bit different, but I promise you, as soon as the weather breaks, I'll head back in the garage to start making some cool stuff out of junk. But I hope you enjoyed this video. If so, give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and if you want to be notified whenever I release new videos, click on the notification bell. Oh, one more thing. I did start a second YouTube channel if you're interested. It's called Dad Magic, where I do a lot of DIY magic. I think you'll enjoy it. I think your kids will enjoy it. And even your grandkids, they will love it. Until next time, I'll meet you in the alley. Okay, well, maybe not this week. All right, well, maybe not even this month. It's maybe in April. Maybe May even. I don't know.